everyone, welcome to the Jada and Stitches show and welcome to August. It's that Fair Isle style time again and this month we are going to sail away. We are going to add sailboats to our blanket. Boats, sailing, fishing, these were all very integral, integral, integral important <laughs> activities to the Fair Isle and probably just about every island around the world throughout history. So we are quite delighted to be able to add some boats to our Fair Isle style calendar blanket. Now, this month's pattern, like last month's, has some left and right handed specific instructions. So we are going to pay extra close attention to the graph this month. Uh, but of course we'll go through all of that in today's tutorial. But do pay attention to what side of the graph you're working from, depending on whether or not you're left or right handed. And without further ado, let's grab our books, grab our yarn, grab our calendar blankets, we will head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up some Fair Isle style sailboats together. For the August installment of our Fair Isle style calendar blanket, we're using the same yarn and the same hook that we used all along so far. For me, that's a size 4 medium weight acrylic yarn. I've got my spools loaded with about 8 to 10 yards per spool of my color B, about 9 yards I've used, but remember if you have slightly looser tension you want a little bit more. And you're going to want about 121 yards of your background color, and I am using white. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a 55 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9. And once you've got all that together, plus your blanket, we can get started. As usual, I highly recommend you make yourself a sampler or two. This allows you to get comfortable with the pattern and also to experiment with some color. Now this month we have left and right handed specific directions for part of the square. So making a sampler might be really helpful in that regard because you have to pay attention to which side of the square or the graph you're coming at. And of course we'll talk more about that in the tutorial. I also thought since I'm turning my samplers into granny squares that I'd have a little bit of fun with the background color this month. So I worked the first few rows using a dark blue for my A so I could sort of simulate a C color and then the rest of the background A color I used a light blue and that gives me sort of a sea and sky with a sailboat on the front. I like how that one turned out. I also decided to make one where I changed the color of the sailboat. So the background or the A color is all the same in this case but the hull and the mask are in brown and the, the sail is in white. So this looks a little bit more like an actual sailboat. And as always, we will have a small version of the graph up here in the top right hand corner. So you can pause the video at any time if you crochet faster or slower and you just want to take a look at the graph, you can sort of speed along that way. We are also going to be giving you the counts of each row in particular and I will be bringing out the graph at the beginning of each row. Let's get started. I have my little safety pin here from where I finished or left off last month so this just keeps my working loop from disappearing on me. And I'm going to put this one aside so it's not in the way anymore. All right. Every row begins with a chain two to begin. The chain two counts as a double crochet and of course it uses that first stitch and then we turn. And this month's graph is also all sort of A to begin and end every row. So you should always be chaining two and turning with your A color. All right, let's take a look at the graph. As usual, row one or the first 20 stitches of the graph and every 20 stitches we repeat is all color A. So 20 stitches, all double crochet, all color A, in my case, white. So at the end of my first row, I'll have 120 double crochet, all in white, or my background color, A, remembering that that chain two that begins the row counts as a double crochet. That last stitch of the row is always worked into the top of the chain two, don't forget. You should have 120 stitches or a multiple of 20 because every repeat of the graph is 20 stitches. Chain two and turn. Our big blankets rolled around here. All right, here we go. Grab the graph. 
so far we are still the same whether we are working right-handed number two you're over here for the second row or left-handed you're over here starting row two this is still a mirror image row so we've got seven in a six in b seven in a repeat seven a six b seven a repeat it's the same whether you are working right-handed or left-handed and here we go this is the row that we engage our spools in so that chain two counts as a double crochet. I'm going to crochet into each of the next six stitches. That'll be the first seven in color A. When you get to the seventh stitch, you're going to half work that stitch, and now in comes the first color change. So I'm going to grab my first spool, start with a little slip knot. And I'm going to keep my spools on the front, I think, for this row to join. So I finished the stitch with my new color, and now I'm going to carry A. I'm going to work six double crochet using B. In this case, I'm using blue, blue for my sailboats. When you get to the stitch just before the color change, remember you only work the first half of it. I'm dropping my color now to the front, switching back to my A color, which I've been carrying underneath my B color the whole way, so there's no carry or anything. It's all underneath B. And now I drop that B. I'm going to work seven more double crochet using A, and that will be the first 20 stitches or the first full repeat of row two of the graph. All right, so I'm just gonna pause there. I'm gonna roll my B color back up, snap it into place so it doesn't get tangled. And let's take a look. We've got 7A to start. 6B, 7A, and now we're going to repeat that. 7A, 6B, 7A, repeat. You're going to be engaging all six of your spools by the end of row two, and I'll see you there. That is row two complete. You should have all six of your spools engaged now. I started my spools on the front of my uh, blanket for this row, so they're all finishing on the front. Make sure your spools start and finish on the same side regardless of the row they're on. So if you started them on the front, they should finish on the front for row two. If you started them on the back, they should finish on the back for row two. Doesn't matter what side uh, you start and finish, but they should always be kind of moving together. We're going to chain two, turn our blankets. All of our spools are gonna move now to the other side, whatever that side is. For me, it's the back. Blankets are getting pretty large here. All right, let's grab the graph. Row three, right-handed, you're over here on the right side. Left-handed, you're over here on the left side. It is the same for both of us though, as this is a mirror image row. 4A, 12B, 4A, repeat. Or if you're lefty, 4A, 12B, 4A, repeat. So again, it's a mirror image row and it's the same going back or forth, regardless of whether you're left or right-handed. Here we go. That first double crochet or a first chain two counts as a double crochet. I want to work three more. Well, as, I, as I start that fourth double crochet, I'm going to pause. I'm going to grab my spool and unravel it a bit. And it's going to reach. So I'm going to make finish that fourth stitch with the B. Remember, you are always looking to the front or the back. You are always looking for that possible reach that you might get when you have to um, sort of pull your B color into position. You're just going to make sure you're double crocheting over top of it. So just make sure that you are pulling it up so that you are carrying that reach just like you're carrying your A color. And we're going to double crochet now with B 
into the next 12 stitches, making sure that we catch that little carried bit of yarn. So try to make sure that that carry isn't too tight. And then once you're into matching stitches of the same color, you don't have to worry quite as much. So there's going to be 12 double crochet in B. And I'm carrying A all the way through. This is quite a lot of double crocheting over top of the A color. So when you work a whole series of stitches with a, a color being carried, like this one, just before you do the color change, I like to sort of hold all my work and just gently pull on that carried A stitch, just to make sure it's not bulging out between the stitches. I'm going to switch back to A now. That is it for the B spool. I'm dropping the spool. So I'm just going to ravel it back up here. And it stays to the back because they're all starting and finishing on the back for this row. And then I finish the 20 stitch part of the graph with four double crochet all in A. So 4A, 12B, 4A, repeat making sure that you start and finish your spools on whatever side they started on, make sure they finish on the same side, and that's what we're going to have all the way across for row two. That's the end of row three, so we've got the sort of the bottom of the hull of our boats now going. Make sure all of your spools have started and finished on the same side. For me that was the back this time. We're going to chain two, turn, There we go. And let's take a look at row four. We are still mirror image. So left-handed and right-handed are still the same. Right-handed, you're over here now. Left-handed, you're over here. Two white or two A, 16B, two A, repeat. So two A, 16B, two A, repeat. Regardless of what direction you're going, it's still the same thing. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. So our next stitch is immediately, we're already into a color change. I'm just going to unsnap my yarn. There's a little bit of a reach, but it's on the front of my blanket now, so I can really see it. I'm going to work over top of both the reach and my color A. And now I'm going to work 16 double crochet in color A. At number 16, you work the first part. Remember, that was a long carry of your color A, so just give it a tug, not too tight. Make sure that it's not bulging out underneath. Switching back to A, that finishes off that 16th stitch of B. Roll it back up, making sure that my spool starts and finishes on the same side, and now it's two double crochet in A, and that finishes off the graph repeat. So 2A, 16B, 2A repeat, and that'll be row four wrapped up. I'll see you at the end. That is row four complete. So we've got the bottom of our boats, our hulls are all now complete, and here is the part of the graph where we start to split for left and right handed specific directions. So make sure all of your spools started and finished on the same side, whatever that is. Chain two, turn. All right, and let's grab the graph. Row five, right handed, you are on the right side. Left handed, you are on the left side. The row repeat for row five is 7A, 1B, 12A, repeat for right-handed. 7A, 1B, 12A, repeat. If you're left-handed, you're starting over here. It is 12A, 1B, 7A, repeat. So left-handed, 12A, 1B, 7A, repeat. Very careful to pay attention to which side you need to come at 
regard, uh, regarding your handedness. So if you're right-handed, you're over here. If you're left-handed, you're over there. The right-handed starts with the smaller stretch of A, and all of us are going to be carrying B. So look down, unhook your first spool. We're going to work the first couple of stitches here. So into the second stitch. And now we need to carry our B. So the right-handed are carrying it for fewer stitches than the left-handed to start, but we're all making sure that we are picking up that B and making sure that we are double crocheting over top of it so that we can carry our B back to where we need it. Alright, right-handed. I've started the seventh stitch. This is where our color change comes up. For the lefties, it will be your thirteenth stitch that where the color changes, or you should say you were half work your twelfth stitch for your thirteenth stitch to be the color change. For the right-handed, it's you half work the seventh stitch, color change, one stitch in B, immediate color change, and now you're back to A. You drop that spool, you are only using your B color for one stitch in this entire row. So I'm going to roll it back up. And now it's 12B or 12A for the right handed to continue and finish that first repeat of the graph. For the lefties, it is 7A to complete that row of the graph. 20 stitches altogether. All right, so there we go. Right-handed, 7A, 1B, 12A, repeat. Left-handed, 12A, 1B, 7A, repeat. And we have started the mast of our ship. I'll see you at the end of row five. That was row five. We all should have a little mast started now off the hull of our boats or our ships. With A, we're going to chain two and turn. So all of our spools now move to the other side. All right, let's take a look at the graph. We are now on row six. Right-handed, you're starting on the left side. Left-handed, you're starting on the right side. For right-handed, we are working 4A, 7B, 1A, 1B, 7A. So that again for the right-handed. 4A, 7B, 1A, 1B, 7A. If you're left-handed, you're working in the opposite direction. So you begin with 7A, 1B, 1A, 7B, 4A. So again for the left-handed. 7A, 1B, 1A, 7B, 4A to finish. Okay, let's give that a go. We all start with that chain two in A. That counts as a double crochet. Right-handed, we're gonna do three more in A. Left-handed, you're going to do six more in A. When you get to the stitch before your color change, Want to unhook your spool. There's going to be a reach, so whether you're working 4A or 7A to begin, you're going to have a bit of a reach. Remember now you're working over top of your A and the little reach of your B color. 7A for the right handed. And the first show, I should say seven and B for the right-handed and for left-handed, it's only one B for you to start. Just before the color change, you drop B, switch back to A. One A, one B. For the lefties, it's one B, one A.
And then you're done with B for right-handed. And to finish, it's seven, don't want to put that there. It is seven in A. So once again, right-handed, 4A, 7B, 1A, 1B, 7A. If you're left-handed, it's 7A, 1B, 1A, 7B, 4A. One more, and that completes that graph repeat. We've started the sail now. We're continuing the mast. Remember, you only need to drop your yarn once you've finished the last of those colors inside that graph. Don't accidentally carry it all the way to the end of the graph. And then um, just make sure you snap it back into place so it doesn't want to tangle on you. And then repeat the whole thing all over again. That's row six finished. We've got the bottom of our sail started now. And we're going to chain two with A and turn our blank blankets around. Spools are moving. And now we are looking at the way this now matches sort of how we look at this on the graph. So if you started on to row six and you were a bit confused as to why the sail seemed to be on the other side, it's because every row we turn our work. So there is no right or wrong side to the blanket, but your sails will all point in one direction if you're looking at one side of the blanket. And if you spin your blanket around, you'll be looking at your sails out the other side. Uh, but it is important to make sure that you're following the graph the right way, whether you're right-handed, you always start where the number is. If you're left-handed, you do the opposite. It's important to do that. Otherwise, you could end up with like your graph not working out. So you'll end up with a piece of the sail here and a piece of the sail there. Uh, so this is why we do that. Okay, we're on to row seven. Row seven is the second row where we're working on our sail. Right-handed, we're starting over here now. Left-handed, you're over here. Right-handed, we begin 7A, 1B, 1A, 5B, and then 6A to finish. So that again, 7A, 1B, 1A, 5B, 6A to finish. Lefties, you're over here, 6A, 5B, 1A, 1B, 7A. Again, for the left, it is 6A, 5B, 1A, 1B, 7A. Okay, so here we go. Row seven, that chain two counts as a double crochet. It is seven stitches in A for the right-handed to begin. It is six for the left-handed to begin. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. You may have to, if you're left-handed, you may have to carry your B yarn in a couple stitches. So make sure because your B starts a little bit after where it finished, you're going to have to work over top of it a little bit. I'm changing to B and then to work that first stitch in B because it's directly on top of the stitch in the same color from the row before, I just want to make sure I grab that little miniature carry. I'm working over top of it just so I don't end up with a kind of like a little bit of a wiggling string all the way up my sailboat. 1B, 1A, or if you're working left-handed, 1A, 1B. And then we're carrying the color that we're not using. If you're working with B, you're carrying A. Once you're done with B, so you're finished the sail or you're finished the mast, you're going to drop B completely and you finish with A. For the left handed, that's 7 in A. For the right handed, that's 6 in A. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Pause. Roll up what's left on your spool. I like to make sure that it's pretty close if I can. And we've got the bottom of our sail happening now. So make sure that all of the bee mast picture um, stitches all end up sitting on top of each other. So you know there's always a little uh, A between the sail and the mast. So there's one A stitch between your B for the mast and for the sail. And that's whether you're going left or right, depending on your handedness. And now the sail is just getting smaller and smaller each row. All right, you can work ahead at that and I'll see you at the end of row seven. That was row seven. We've got the bottom half of our sail done now. So we're going to, with A, chain two, turn our blankets, Got all of my spools back on the front. We are looking at row eight now. Right handed, you're over here. Left handed, you're over here. Both right and left start with seven A. So seven and A, but for the right handed, we go four B, one A, one B, seven A. Left handed, seven A, one B, one A, four B. 7a. So we're all starting with 7 in our A color. That chain 2 counts as the first double crochet. And here we go. Because we have got to anytime you start working over top of stitches that were from the previous row a different color. You want to make sure that you carry that color and in this case I'm going to pick up my B yarn just so I can work that seventh stitch and I'm carrying the color. So I've grabbed it in, under the stitch and I'm carrying it so that it's where I need it to be when I start. Now I work four in the B color because I'm right-handed this is the last part of the B that you do if you're left-handed. And then we come to that little very recognizable spot. There's the little s stitch of A and then the stitch of B. The stitch of B that runs up here is our mast. So there's always a space between the mast and the sail and that's a stitch of A. So whenever you get there just look for that visual cue. That's it for the B. I'm going to drop the B, wind up my spool. So whether you were right-handed and you started with 4B, 1A, 1B, or you were left-handed and you went 1B, 1A, 4B, we all begin and end the row with 7A. And that's all you've got to do for row 8. Keep an eye on that graph up in the top right-hand corner. Pause the video if you need to. And uh, one more there. One more in A. There we go. Our sail is getting smaller, our mast is getting taller, and we are closing in on the end of our graph. I'll see you at the end of row eight. That's row eight complete. Make sure all of your spools are starting and finishing on the same side. Chain two in A. Let's turn our blankets. And we're on to row nine. Right handed, we're back over here. Left handed, you're over here. Right handed, we start with 7A, 1B, 1A, 2B, and then 9 in A. So once more, 7A, 1B, 1A, 2B, 9 in A. That's if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, it's the opposite. You begin with 9 in A, 2B, 1A, 1B, 7 in A. 
Once again, for the left-handed, it's 9A to begin, 2B, 1A, 1B, 7A. Okay, here we go. That chain two at the beginning does count as your first stitch. Remember to look for those visual cues. You know what direction you're going in based on where the mast is. You get up to that point or the sail. If you're working left-handed, you come up on your sail first. If you're working right-handed, you're coming up on the mast. Same thing applies though. You want to pause before you finish that last stitch at the color change so that you can change colors. When you have a little bit of a reach, which you typically do, make sure that you are working over top of it, whether you're coming at this from the left or the right, and then you're working over top of the yarn you're not using. There's always that little A stitch in between the mast and the sail. Carry the A. Only two stitches in the sail. When you're done with the sail or the mast, whatever direction you came at it, finish that last stitch with A and then the remainder of the row is A. So 9A to finish the row if you're working right-handed, 7A to finish the row if you're working left-handed. Either way, we're both going to arrive at the same thing. Let me see what I've got here. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Yep. So there we go. I'm almost finished with my sail and my mast. I just love this little image of a sailboat. It is so darn cute. Repeat that all the way across. We've got one more row of color change and then we have got a finishing row of straight double crochet in A and we're done. That's row nine complete. We're going to chain two with A and turn. Once again, all of our spools move to the other side of the blanket, but this is the last time. Row 10, we are using our spools for the last time. Take a look at the graph. Row 10, right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. For the right-handed, we are going to work 10 in A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 7 in A. So 10A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 7A. Left-handed, you're the reverse. 7A to start, you come to your mast first. 1B, 1A, 1B, we're finishing the sail with only one stitch in B. 10A to finish the row, that's for the lefties. All right, let's do it. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. If you're working right-handed, you're coming up on your sail first and you are only putting one last stitch of B into it. It's gonna be the stitch just before Everything changes color at the uh, so the stitch before the mast or the stitch before the stitch in between the stitch of the mast and the sail or B A B. So either way you're moving, whether you're coming left or right, it's B A B B A B. So we've got to pick up B. Remember, there's always going to be a little mini reach. So make sure you just kind of grab it when you work over top of it, whether you've got your spools to the front or the back, look for those little reaches. So B, A, and B. And that is it for the spool. That's it for the color changes completely. So you can snip your yarn if you want. Certainly drop the spool. So I think I went one over there, but that's okay. 
So 10A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 7A for the right-handed, 7A, 1B, 1A, 1B, 10A for the left-handed. That's it for the spool. If you've got any yarn left over, I'm just going to snip mine. I'm going to get my spool put aside. And now I'm going to repeat that all the way across. That ends the spools. And then we've got one more row left. That's the end of row 10. So we all just had a BAB kind of repeat. It was the last little use of our spools. I've snipped all of my spool yarns now, uh, so I just have the tails left that I can weave in after the fact. We're all going to chain two, turn. Row 11 is just like row one. It is straight double crochet all the way across in A. So no need to look at the graph anymore. We're just working a double crochet in every single stitch all the way across. In A, we will have 120 stitches at the end of every single row in this blanket. No exceptions. <laughs> That's the end of our B, so you can put away your spools for another month. And we are almost done with the August strip. We are all ready to sail away now. That is August all wrapped up. I'm going to take my hook out, put my little safety pin placeholder back in place. There we go. Haha, -ha. that's not going to disappear on me now. I can weave in all my little tails and pop it back into my work in progress basket for another month. I really love the sailboat. It's different than a lot of the other graphs that we've done so far. It's not 100% mirror image. So there really is an important left or right handed look at that graph as we work through it. But it's kind of an evolution in the way that we use the graphs. And it can be a little confusing because we're used to seeing the same mirror image staring at us, whether we've got the blanket facing one way or the other way. And it can be a little confusing. You might think, oh my gosh, all my, sa my sails are in the wrong direction, but they're not. It's just because you've been changing the blanket <laughs> with every row. So every row that image is going to sort of flip to the other side. That's why it's so important to pay attention to what side of the graph you're on. But that's all part of the fun of learning how to use graphs and do graph work. And what we're left with are these really, really cute sailboats. I love this and I'd love to see yours. So if you are in the mood to share your progress on your Fair Isle style calendar blanket, please do so. You can send a photo to us at our Etsy shop. Just head to our Etsy shop. The link is down in the description box below. You can click on message seller, send us a photograph by either clicking on the little camera icon or the little landscape icon that's in the message box. It'll let you take a picture or attach a photo that you've already got. Please let us know that it's okay to share and we will share that photo with everyone else in the community so we can all see how everybody's blankets are coming along together. We hope you enjoyed that sail away, <laughs> sail away party today and we will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty and have a wonderful week. Bye everybody. Hi everybody, Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.